Greetings to all this Sunday morning from the Florence International Church. My name is Pastor Randy McGeehy, and it is my privilege today to bring the Word of God to you in a message that is entitled, Why Do Christians Suffer? And that will be taken from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. But before we begin our message today, we're going to take a moment and reflect in a moment of worship and a time of allowing our spirit to settle in on what God has for us today. So I invite you to join in with us in this time of worship, and then I will return with the message for this week. Yeah. 
today with a passage of scripture from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 6 through 9 and I would invite you to follow along as I read that passage of scripture as we prepare for God's message for us this morning. In all this you greatly rejoice though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Over 2,500 years ago, Solomon surveyed the course of human existence and concluded that life is all vanity or emptiness in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verses 18 through 23. He saw the righteous suffer and he felt that it was a form of injustice. Job must have felt much more this way during his time of trial. And perhaps you too have gone through an extended trial and had questions and doubts about that trial. Now let me stop and let me say to you today that everything isn't doom and gloom. In fact, we believers have it pretty good in so many ways. Peter gives us several reasons for this, for rejoicing in verse 3. We have a living hope that we find in verse 4. We have a lasting inheritance that is reverse, referred to in verse 5. And we have a long-term salvation that is talked about in verse 6. We have a long for him final reward to look forward to. So with all of this in mind, let me say that not all is bad in this moment in our lives. In fact, there is much cause for rejoicing in the Lord today. And we ought to get about the business of doing that right now because he is worthy. However, there will be trials that will come our way. We may not understand them all nor appreciate them when they come, but we need to be prepared for them all the same. That is Peter's purpose in this particular passage of verses. He wants to encourage his readers, but he also wants to prepare them for what is surely to come. So let's see what Peter's words can teach us today about our trials and why Christians do have times of suffering. He gives us three words that we need to keep in mind about our trying times. The first point that I will make today comes from verse 6, and it's a word about reality. Rejoicing is our common state. If you spend enough time around some believers, you may come away feeling that the Christian life is a big series of <clears throat> trials and that there is no room in that trial for praise. In truth, we are meant to be a rejoicing people. We are to rejoice in spite of our troubles, as 
Luke 20 verse 10 instructs. Also, redemption does not guarantee us immunity from trials. The Christian who thinks that just because he or she is saved that they are going to be shielded from trouble is in for a very terribly rude awakening. Being saved is no hedge from trouble. And, as an example, I will say, for instance, Christians do get sick. Christian marriages do fall apart. Christian parents have trouble with their children. Christians have financial difficulties. You see, Christians walk through some pretty deep and dark valleys in their life. Jesus said it as plain as it could have been said in John 16, 33, when he said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Remember that just because this trial came, and took you by surprise and jerked the rug out from under your feet, it never took God by surprise. He knew it was coming. He knew about it before it happened, and he had already made a way to bring you out of that trial. He never changes and is still able to help you through, as spoken in Hebrews 13.8. Rough times are in store for everyone. No one is immune from the troubles and the trials of this life. Consider the struggles of Job as an example. His life was going pretty well. He was a blessed man. He had a large family. And he was right with God, but his life fell apart seemingly. I ask you, please, do not fall into the trap of the health and wealth preachers who tell you that if you are saved, you will never have a problem in your life again, because they're lying to you. God wants you to know that there will be times when you will have battles in your life. Peter calls these trying times manifold temptations. This means that they hit us from every side and with often devastating consequences. The second point that I will make today is from verse 7, and it's a word about realignment. The area of our trials, the trial of your faith. When troubles do come, they seem to concentrate their power against our faith in the Lord. Satan wants to do all that he can to make Christians doubt the power of God to meet their every need. If anyone knew this, it was Peter himself. Jesus had already told him that he was going to die for Christ in John chapter 21, verses 18 through 19. Jesus had already told Peter to expect rejection from the world, and Peter had already suffered for his faith, as is talked about in Acts chapter 4. Paul knew his share of sufferings as well. Stephen suffered for Jesus. James was killed for his faith in Acts chapter 12. And more than 68 million believers have died during this past over 2,000 years. So they're in good company. The alignment that takes place 
for us, Peter speaks of the refining process that gold goes through. When it is subjected to the flame, the impurities and the dross in the gold come to the top surface, and the result is a far purer gold than that which was present before the fire was applied. This same is true in the life of believers. When Jesus allows us to go through the furnace of affliction, it serves to remove from our lives things that were not needed, and it brings into a closer and pure relationship our lives with the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, we find there is an abundance that we receive. Peter nudges us to remember that we aren't home yet. Our trials are working for a greater good, which is spoken of in Romans 8.28. We may not see the benefit today, but when we stand before the Lord in heaven and we are rewarded for our walk with Him and for the sufferings we endured below, it will be worth it all, and we will find the reasons for many. As an example, <clears throat> let me tell you about a young eagle. When it is time to leave the nest, the mother will literally throw the infant from the nest. As he plummets to earth, vainly attempting to fly, he fears surely and certainly that he will die. At the last moment, his mother swoops down from above and catches him and carries him back to the safety of the nest. This is repeated, in fact, several times over the next few days. And finally, the little eaglet will spread his wings and begin to soar upwards. Eventually, he will be able to fly above all the storms below, but only because he endured the fear of falling. Just like that mother eagle, God knows best for our lives today. He will not let you crash. He will not let you burn. He just allows what he does to strengthen your faith and to grow you up in him. Let's face it, friends. If the Lord never challenged us, we would never grow. The third and final point that I will make today comes from verse 8. And it's a word about reliability. Not that God can count on us, but that we, in fact, can always count on Him. As we weather the storms of life and see God come through time and time again, we can actually learn to develop a spirit of praise as we journey from here to heaven. We will find that our unseen Savior will see us through every trial in our life. Just like the shepherd in Psalm 23, he ever abides with his own. When we face trials, he goes through them with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us as is spoken of in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. Let me remind you, His grace is always sufficient for every need in your life, as spoken of in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. You see, friends, this and these examples should be more than enough to cause us to be filled with that unspeakable joy as talked about in verse 8. So in conclusion, 
I do not know why the Lord keeps leading me to preach sermons dealing with weathering the storms as of late. Either someone is in a difficult place right now, as in fact many are, or it is just a situation of what we are walking through in the world around us today. Or maybe some are about to go into a challenging moment in their life and the Lord is trying to get their attention. Whatever the reason, I am glad for this book that gives us hope regarding the overcoming of life's difficult times. Did you hear me say the word overcoming? Do you need something from Jesus today? If so, I would encourage you to make an altar right now where you are in this moment. You see, Jesus is waiting. And he is very willing to help you and to see that your needs are completely and fully met. Please hear me. Trust him today. Trust him in all things and in all ways, all circumstances in your life. You can trust Jesus Christ. He loves you. He created you. He did it with a plan and he did it with a purpose. And not only does he want you to walk an overcoming life in this moment, but he is prepared, preparing a place for all that believe and trust him one day in glory for all of eternity. Would you pray with me in this moment? Father, we are so thankful today for your love. So thankful, Lord, that we can turn to you in every time of our life, both good and bad. Lord, we want to be able to praise you more for your goodness. We don't want to be focused on the negatives and the trials that we walk through in such a way that it causes us to doubt or to stumble. But we want to look to those times as opportunities when your Holy Spirit can guide us, direct us, speak into our lives and help us to walk in victory in that moment as a witness of what it is to be a child of the King. Lord, help us today to trust you more. Help us to not simply be the kind of people that are continually asking why, but instead looking to those times and saying, Lord, I'm not comfortable here, but I know you are preparing me for something powerful. If there is anyone in this listening time, Lord, that does not know you as Savior, would you speak to their heart right now? And as they reach out to you, Father, would you just cover them in your love and just speak eternal truths into their life that will help them release themselves unto you. Ask your forgiveness. Be washed in your precious shed blood and begin to walk a life of victory for the glory of God. For those today that know you as Savior and may be walking through some very difficult moments, Lord, would you just put your arms of love around them right now? Reassure them, comfort them, and strengthen them that they can be an overcomer in this life for your glory and as a witness of your love to all people. Lord, we're so thankful today for everything you do for our lives. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor, Lord, because you truly 
are worthy. And we receive it all in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us this Sunday here at the Florence International Church. We are blessed and we are privileged to have you take part in our message of the week. I want to remind you that you can find our messages on our website at www.florenceinternationalchurch.com. The current and previous two sermons are always online at that place. And we encourage you to make yourself available to what God is speaking to us in this particular moment. Remember, our weekly devotional series takes place on Wednesdays in the morning on our Facebook page at the Florence International Church. We invite you to tune those in each week for that midweek pickup that will help encourage you and strengthen you in the Word of God. Then, of course, you can join us again next Sunday at 8.30 a.m. Central European Time for the message of the week as we gather together and hear from the Word of God. On behalf of the body of the Florence International Church, we thank you for joining us today. We hope that this Word has given you some encouragement as to maybe the trial that you are currently walking through. Remember, He will never leave you and He will never forsake you. God bless you today, and thank you for joining us here in this moment for God's Word.